All right. Email from Michael from PA. Dear Marcus and David, can you provide a few comments on different Protestant views on the Eucharist along with an explanation of consubstantiation? Why did Luther develop the concept of consubstantiation as compared with Catholic teaching on transubstantiation? All right, this is a very complicated and in-depth topic, so we'll just hit on a few highlights, okay? Um, the, uh, L Luther had a real dislike of Aristotle, the Greek philosopher Aristotle, and of his influence over late medieval Catholic theology. And I think he just had kind of a knee-jerk reaction to throw out anything that smacked of Aristotelian mm. Philosophy and transubstantiation is a doctrine that is couched in Aristotelian terms from Aristotelian metaphysics. Right? However, what Luther never wanted to throw out was the very biblical and patristic notion that the Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus, or that when we receive the, the Eucharist, we're receiving the real Christ. And there, Luther could be very inconsistent, and there's he a was passage. Not systematic. He was not systematic. There's a passage where he's debating over the nature of the Eucharist, and he says, how on earth can you throw out a doctrine that's always been held by the church from time immemorial? You know, can you imagine? Uh, Luther, excuse me, wake up. But um, So I think that was Luther's point of view. Now, in, if, when you move over into Calvinism, you get a completely different flavor. All right? You get a completely different flavor. Um, and, and there, the Calvinists were very exercised about what they saw as Catholic idolatry. And they were very interested in uh, the, the, what they understood to be the reform of the liturgy, and they wanted the preaching of the word to be the center of the liturgical action. And so while they didn't, they didn't get rid of the Eucharist, they wanted to reinterpret the Eucharist in such a way that it would give preeminence to the preached word and would eliminate any possibility of what they called idolatry. So that the Catholic practice of veneration of the sacred host, for example, is anathema mm -hmm. to Protestants, I mean to, to Calvinists. So Calvin still retained a doctrine of Christ being mystically present in the Eucharist, and he had a very, very high doctrine compared to most evangelicals. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in fact, it's worth mentioning, he wrote a little treatise in 1541, I think, in, in French on the doctrine of the Eucharist, where he actually said a proper understanding of the Eucharist is necessary for salvation, something that no evangelical would ever, would. ever say today. So he had a very high view, but not as high as Luther's. And then, of course, once you, you, you get out of Geneva and you get into Puritanism, um, yeah. it, you know, it, it, the farther you move away from the church as the center of the life, Christian life, the weaker and weaker the doctrine of the Eucharist becomes. All right. That's a good picking and choosing. Of, that's a big subject, isn't it? It's a huge it's, subject. It's, it's an important, very important one. 